episode is it about hoarding. I just can't unpack until I build jelly. Welcome to work to work the effort. So today we're going to build a shelving system, a very modular system that you can modify any way you want to fit your needs. That's going to be simple to build and relatively inexpensive. Now I want to talk about design real quickly. We don't have as generally homeowners and woodworkers big engineering degrees. We're not designing Eiffel Towers or World Trade Centers or anything like that. But we can use common sense when we design stuff based upon our general knowledge we learned in public school education system or college uh, if you went there. Just general knowledge to combat the forces that shelving systems are dealing with. And these are the same forces Bin Laden used to his advantage bringing down the World Trade Center. Static energy. We are lifting up weight and holding it up there. That weight has energy and we have to combat it in our design. And that's, again, thinking using common sense to build something that will combat that force. And we as woodworkers, we have a lot of force to deal with because we need big, modelly shelving system designed to handle tons of weight. Not hundreds of pounds, tons of weight. Us modelly men or the X chromosomes capable of kicking these metal men's butts, or any of the six-year-olds capable of outsmarting us, we need to be able to handle a lot of weight. I don't know about you, but it is not uncommon for me to go get an entire tree trunk, cut it up for turning blanks, and stick them on my shelvings to dry. Or you go to the furniture store, store buy 16 quarter wood, I mean, that stuff sometimes takes three people to lift, and you're storing that up in the air. We deal with a lot of weight, not to mention the machinery we use. How many of y'all have iron machines that we don't use very often, so we stick them on the shelf? That's a lot of weight. And if you go to the whole big box stores and look at the shelving systems, they weight those things by the hundreds of pounds, not by the tons. And some of them can get really expensive. Those cheap plastic ones can be a hundred bucks. The metal ones that we probably need, not, I'm not talking the thin sheet metal ones, I mean those big heavy duty industrial ones, those are like three, four hundred dollars for four shelves six feet across. How much stuff are we actually going to get on that? You can start building an entire shop of those things, that gets to be a lot of money. And hey, we're woodworkers. We can build something better, cheaper and it can be designed specifically for us. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, I see a lot of designs out there, and I want you to think about the weak link that I see over and over and over in those designs. That weak link is the screw. Now, what kind of force can a screw handle? I'm not going to get into numbers. Let's just use common sense. We got threads on, on a typical wood screw. You have a shank that's smooth that's going to get in, go into the piece that it is screwing in. So you have your screw head, you have the shank, and then you have those threads. One piece of wood here, that's the shank size. That way it can slide in between those and go in, uh, squeeze this board to the other board. And this board does gripping and pulling. So, if you put two boards together and one of them has it to be doing weight, the weight is handled right here, on the very edge right there. How much strength does that thing have? How many of y'all have broken screws? How many of y'all have bent nails this size just hammering them in? And that is a torsional strength. Yes, we use a lot of them, and that strength is accumulative based upon those, uh, the number of screws you use, but still, it's not that much. Worst case scenario, how many of y'all have seen those guys that design stuff that goes into the ceiling? So it's held by down, held up in the air by the structure of the ceiling. And how do they do that? They will put lag bolts or screws up into those joists in the ceiling. So you have that joist running across your ceiling. You have another board that is holding up there. And then they put the head of a screw or a bolt 
threads, and then the threads come in here. What's the weak link in that situation? It's the wood. Because the only thing that's holding that screw up is the wood in between each one of those threads. It's not all this wood. It's that wood right there. The moment that wood in between these threads loosens up or weakens, that thread comes out. So you put a ton of wood on maybe eight bolts. Yeah, it'll hold you up for a while, but now imagine the wood shrinking on the screw and expanding through the seasons, shrinking, expanding. All of a sudden, there's air gaps in there. Maybe it gets a little wet. Who knows what happens that weakens up those wood fibers and things fall down from the ceilings. Okay, so somehow, if we're going to be using screws, we need to use them in a way that they are not bearing weight, that the weight is transferred into the wood and into the ground. So that's the kind of design that we're going to be working with today. We want to transfer as much weight into the legs of our structure so it gets transferred into the ground so that the joinery isn't the stressed member. Common sense stuff when you think about it. So I just got back from the big box store buying all the materials for this project and while I was there I took a look at their uh, manufactured shelvings and the only one I saw there that could even come close to handling some weight was still a fairly light duty metal unit that they were selling for 200 bucks or almost 200 bucks and they really only had three usable shelves for about six feet maybe 12 inches deep it wasn't that big a unit for about $310 and some change, I went in and I bought a half dozen uh, 2x4s by 12 foot. Then I bought another 25 10 footers. I needed some 8 footers, but I'll just cut down the 10 footers. I bought 7 4x8 sheets of OSB. I needed 8, but I already had one here. I bought two big boxes of screws. And I bought 42 carriage bolt kit. What I mean by carriage bolt kits is you have to buy them all, all separate, but I bought one five inch carriage bolt with two washers and a nut per kit. All of that cost me $300, $310 and some change. This is one of those products that you can't even come close to buying your way to the quality that we're going to be doing here as much as a bomb. This is one of definitely one of the ones that's worth your while to build your own shelving units. So I'm going to put the shelving here. I'm going to have one 12 foot section right here which will go from one wall almost all the way to the other wall. Then I'm going to put a three foot hallway and I'm going to put a second shelving unit right here. I'm doing this for a couple different reasons. One, I can't really lock brace into this wall. It's not very stable. And if you're putting in tall shelvings, we're going to be going 10 feet up. There's 12 foot ceilings here but there's some wiring up there. So I can only go 10 feet straight up. That will be very tippy if you can't anchor it to something. And I always suggest if you're building or buying shelving to anchor it to a wall. But if I come out and I put another shelving unit out here, and phase two will be doing a shelving unit out this way, then the whole combined unit will be about as wide and as as wide and as long as it will be high so that will be a fairly stable unit if I just had shelving right here it would be a lot taller than it is wide and that could fall over so when you're designing your own system take that into consideration if at all possible anchor against a wall but this is a rental unit this wall isn't very stable I'm not going to invest money into reinforcing it to anchor against okay Basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have two by, two by four by tens as my legs. The twelves will be the rails. And once again, I bought a bunch of screws, and I told you why the reasons why screws weren't as good uh, because of the torsional ability. So I want y'all to think about this. How am I going to use those bolts that I bought to counteract gravity to transfer weight down to the ground? without using the screws as a structural member or as a stressed part. Think about that while we get to building. And my whole designs I put on a little yellow blueprint, nothing too sophisticated. This is how I do a lot of my designing. And this is about really all you need for something as simple as this kind of shelving unit.
just basic diagrams to tell you what to buy. Now probably the functionally most important step is picking your legs. These need to be the best boards you've bought. The straightest grain, the ones with the least number of knots, the densest ones that you have. Because they're going to hold these several tons of weight that you will likely be putting them up. So you want that weight transferred straight down. If you got some bowing on it, and you got a lot of weight up top, it's just going to fold like a pretzel. Now we are going to be adding cross members that are going to further strengthen it and help keep it straight. But you might as well start as straight as possible. So what I've done is for these first two shelves I'm joining together to create that larger square, I've picked the 14 best legs that I've got. Now I'm going to cut down uh, several of them to make stretchers to go across those legs. So let me give you a quick idea of my thought pattern. Right now I need to cut the stretchers for the second set of shelves that I'm going to join with the ones on the back wall to create that nice solid square. So these stretchers are going to be running the lengths. I want to simplify the construction of the shelves, so I have a 4 foot by 8 foot OSB board. I just want to cut shelving out of that without having to cut it to length. So I want to make sure these shelves right here are at least 48 inches across, so I can slide them in. So that creates three columns of legs to hold those 4 by 8 sheets. So to figure out the length of the stretches I need right here, I simply put, took three columns of 1.5 inches, the thickness of the 2x4, and added 48 inches in between them. And that came up to 105 inches, and to make it easy on myself, I'm rounding up to 101, and I'll give myself a half inch slop on each one of those towers uh, for the shelves to slide into. So my next step is I'm coming up six stretchers for these smaller shelves. So have you figured out my design yet? How I'm transferring that tonnage of weight from the shelving straight to the legs? Not yet? Well, my next one is probably going to give it away. I now need to cut stretchers for the shelves. Basically connecting the legs from the, the back to the front and creating a place for the shelving to sit on. And those I want my shelving to be about 20 inches deep. I've measured all my plastic tubs. And the last time I built these, I did 24 inches and that was a bit much. A lot of commercial shelving seems to be 18 inches and I, I've always found that. I couldn't turn boxes the way I like to. So I, I'm going to compromise with 20 inches. So I'm going to make these stretchers at 20 inches. I'm just going to cut up a bunch of 2x4s. But because my design, they're going to overhang the front a little bit, I'm going to soften all the corners a little bit by rounding them over. So that's my next step. Create all the stretchers and round over one corner of the front. So now that we got all the parts together, I have my rails, which are going to connect the front leg, front legs to the back legs. I have my stretchers, both 12 foot ones for the back wall and 8 foot ones for the front, front section. And then I have my legs. Now there are a lot of different ways you can assemble this. And here's the best way I know, the safest way I know, and this is the way I've done it twice before is actually building from the wall forward. If you're going to anchor to the wall, the way I did it was I put two 2x4s on the top and the bottom secured to the wall. And then I could attach the leg, the back legs, to that anchor. Then I could attach these stretchers going forward and then bolt those front legs to the stretchers. So in essence, I was building out from the wall so it was always stable. I don't have that option here, so I'm going to try another way, and I'm going to build the leg sections, meaning the front and back legs with the stretchers coming up. I will put them on the walls, and then I will attach the stretchers to brace them up. So, our first section on, on this video is let's build the leg sections. Now the first thing I need to do in creating these leg assemblies is put layout lines on each one of the legs so I can attach the stretchers from the front leg to the back leg consistently and the whole thing will be flat. But, and the shelves will be flat. But I don't trust myself to measure each one of the separate legs perfectly every single time. 
So I'm going to be using a furniture making technique and using a story stick. I'm making all my measurements and layouts on one master leg, and then I will transfer those lines to the other legs. That way, if I do make an error on the master, at least I know the error will be consistent throughout the entire project and my shelves will turn out at least horizontal. Now, I can only do this because I trust that the floor in this brand new establishment is fairly flat. In the past, when I've had floors that I knew were uneven, this technique would not work. What I had to do in those situations was, once again, I built from the wall back. I attached the braces on the back wall, and then I attached the legs to those braces. Then using a level, and a, I could create a horizontal line all the way across that back wall at each one of my shelves heights. Then that line was very easy to transfer to the front legs when I attached the rails by using a simple level. Kept everything nice and horizontal and it worked out just great. But in this situation, I'm going to be using a story stick for more accuracy. So here's my basic operation. I have my two legs and I have my stretchers. I cut two spacer blocks and I pinched them in between with a clamp so this distance will always be the same no matter where it's at. Uh, the spacer blocks are identically the same size. I position my leg, my stretchers, so that they will protrude just a little bit so that a 2x4 will fit on top. So now I just clamped it all together aligning with my nails. Now I am going to drill a hole and I'm going to slide a 3 8 inch bolt with two washers on either side but I'm only going to finger tighten them for now. I'm going to leave them finger tight until I get them up there. That way it will settle on the floor and the floor will make it plumb. Uh, I do trust that this floor is plumb. At which point I'll tighten it up and everything will lock together. So, let's get busy and assemble a bunch of legs. Now to make the feet, all I did was take the stretchers and reverse them so that the angle is coming up top. So that way, uh, there will be less chance you're going to hit it with your toe. So the foot, it's just these upside down. There we go. One down, eight more to go. So attaching the middle two back stretchers with the middle two shelves posed a bit of a dilemma for me because they are 12 feet long. My only solution I could figure out was to thread the stretchers through the two, two middle legs, uh, screw them to the two outer legs, and then kind of shimmy those two middle legs to their proper spot using a 48 and a quarter inch uh, spacer to get the sizing just right. It's an ugly solution, but it worked out. Well, I hope you're starting to see the logic between this madness. These rails are actually being held against the legs with two screws. These screws' only job is to keep it against the leg. They might help with a little weight, but most of the weight is going to be handled by the 24 38 inch carriage bolts I have. And those are much more conducive to handling stress loads going sideways or torsion or shearing forces. Uh, all that. Then uh, the weak link is probably going to be the uh, OSB board I have right here. But because I'm putting mainly boxes and stuff on them, they'll mainly rest on the rails. So there you go. There's the strength of the whole system. Now, I have not tightened up all these bolts yet, so what you're about to see me do is I'm going to lay a level on this, and I'm going to be able to flex it back and forth a, a tad bit until I get it level, and then I'm going to put a bolt, I mean a screw, in the corner of, one, of each one of these legs, and that will keep it from racking, and at that point I will tighten down these lag bolts, uh, these carriage bolts, so that they will really squeeze together and lock everything in solid.
Now with just that done, this thing is rock solid. I mean, it's moving as one unit now. So I add the cross braces to the other unit and we're all set. Okay, so I have the second section and I've already joined these two together. The next step, I'm going to be putting the OSB boards up and you won't be able to see into it anymore. So I thought I'd go ahead and film this right now. Now, to speed things up, I don't like measuring. And whenever I do stuff like these gaps here, if I want to be consistent, I, I cut one board and then I fit it in between them and use that as a shim to butt things up to make sure everything is done. I've done the same thing here. I wanted a 42 inch hallway, so I cut a bunch of boards that when I fit them in between these, they would be a perfect 42 inches. Then I just squeeze everything together and put cross beams along the sides and on top to lock it all together. So now this structure, it's pretty solid and it's square. Oh, and if you have the choice and you're using sheet goods, always build an eight foot grid. Just makes life a lot easier. All that's left now is to cut up the shelves. I'm a bit lucky. I have all these step stools we were using at the school, and they do make cutting up planks a lot easier. If you're having to make a lot of repeated cuts on small items with your circular saw, just take a few minutes and make a fence. All you gotta do is screw, screw a straight board down to a piece of plywood or anything else and make a cut. And that cut will be a zero clearance fence where you can draw your lines. It's as simple as that. Then just clamp it down, grab your circular saw and make your cuts. Easy peasy. So there we go. Phase one of my storage setup. Now, I have, I basically have enough material to build one more section like this going out that way. So I want to guesstimate that this ran me about $280 and the next section will run me maybe $60 additional for my grand total. Not bad for storage. I've left a bunch of room on bottom so I can put shorter shelves in the future later on if I need to. But this will keep everything off the ground that I have right now. This will be my personal storage, and then we'll have the wood shop storage going out that way. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, telling a friend. The best thing you could do is help us spread the word about the channel so we can boost our subscribership. And if you want to see more like this and you want to uh, support us a little more, visit our website, worththeeffort.com. I have a whole support page where there's lots of ways you can uh, support us besides monetary donations. And I want you to remember one last thing. It is always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. Time for me to load this thing up.